we have all the numbers on there. Yeah. 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 I'll get it in a minute. We had it. We had someone. You know, no she oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, McDonald's is here. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. 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 It's nine hours. We leave from Miami tomorrow. We have to go to Paris. And <coughs> <coughs> we had to change plans I didn't even in Paris. Offend? No, I know. Like, yeah. I can deal with <coughs> flying over the parts of the United States because I know there's airports to Miami. Yeah, Morning, everybody. Welcome. As uh, we normally do, let's start, let's go around the room, introduce ourselves. Um, we should start with an, an accountant. I like starting with an accountant. Oh, you want Godwin to start? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Oh. McGinley, right on cue. Perfect timing. You couldn't have planned exactly. You couldn't have planned it better. Welcome. Well, good morning, everyone. Donovan McGinley with RSM. <laughs> morning. Chantal Knowles with RSM. Nancy Samuels, accounting. Richard Roberts, audit committee. Claudia Robbins, Inspector General's office. Elizabeth McBride, Inspector General's office. Lung Chu, Inspector General. Noah Silver, Audit Committee. Dave Talley, Audit Committee. Tammy McDonald, Audit Committee. James Campbell, Seminole Ridge High School, sitting in for Maureen Warner. Frank Barbieri, School Board. Blair Little John from the General Counsel's office. Yes, and we have some people back here. Sean Humphrey, IT. Welcome. Over here. Very nice. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Ray, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself to the committee. Are you, are you, did you just start with the district? I did. Yeah. Please come on up for a second. Introduce yourself. We like putting people on the spot in an <laughs> informal manner. Good morning. Uh, Ray Usler. Uh, I've been here about a month now. Um, I am the new director of IT security. Mm -hmm. So uh, a very, very important thing in today's world, to say the least, uh, with everything going on with uh, breaches and hacks and stuff like that. So my job is to protect the data, and, uh, <clears throat> and it's all about the data in today's world. So it's a community, and I expect <clears throat> everyone's help in protecting the data with me, because it's not just me standing in front at the sidewalk. So um, I, I would appreciate everyone not clicking links from people they don't know, uh, <laughs> and to just contact me if you have any questions. I am here to help. I am here to assess. If you have, is that a phishing? And if anyone did send you know, a phishing email or an uh, attachment, please, again, don't hesitate to contact me. That's what I'm here for. So thank you. Thank you. Where, where were you working before here? I was at the University of Mary Washington in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Hmm. So, um, and previous to that, I was at uh, Macomb Community College up in Michigan. My family's still up in Michigan, so I guess I don't know what snow term I am coming down, a flake, a bird, or whatever I am. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I love the hot and humid weather <laughs> that I've got to enjoy. Got it. <laughs> so I, uh, but I've been in this business for a long time. I had 20 years of uh, insurance business before that. I've written <clears throat> systems. I've run operation centers. So I have a vast background, but uh, security is certainly something that changes and it's challenging and again I, I look forward to that but uh, again I'm only as good as the team and the team is the entire district so appreciate it welcome thank you uh, first item is the approval of the agenda uh, oh I'm sorry need to move number five to before we approve the agenda we have a recommendation we'd like to move number five which is succession plan for the inspector general. You can't make this. You are the inspector general. So it has to come from somebody else. <laughs> are we going to move it? Move to it. What's going to happen is, no, because of protocol, the board's really supposed to come to us okay. and ask us to look into it. So we're going to move it into an FYI. Uh, That's okay. okay with everybody. Thank you. Is that all right? Is it done? Okay. So we're going to move that. We'll move that down. After that, can we get an approval of the agenda? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to. I make a motion that we approve the agenda. Second. That's presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> Passes unanimously, Blair. Okay. So we adjusted the agenda. Uh, the minutes. Do we have a motion for the minutes? Move approval of July 19th minutes. 
Second. All, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Passed unanimously. Very good. Uh, any public comments? Nothing? Okay. Very good. Let's move on. We have four audit reports today to, re to uh, be presented. Uh, Mr. Chu, the first one is the uh, work order system. Try got Who's going to present that? Um, uh, this report is very, very straightforward. Uh, it is. You know, no major findings. So if you want me to walk through it quickly or you want to have my staff, Alan. We read it. Well, we see if there's any questions. Uh, You're absolutely correct. It's, it's, it's nice to see a re, uh, report come through. Yeah. It seems uh, in very good order except for some of the... Uh, just a few minor exits minor from findings. Trove. Yeah. Any questions from the committee? No. no. Motion to pass it as presented. So moved. So, so moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Let's accept that. Very good. Thank you. 4-2 is uh, the review of Galaxy 3 after oh. school revenue collection. We had some issues there, Mr. Chu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this report is kind of uh, very kind of com complicated. Um, the, the nature, I need to go to the, okay. This report was performed uh, in response to the request of the principal um, that there, there were issues regarding uh, some financial and administrative um, um, aspect of the school. So we met with uh, Office of Professional Standards and then we kind of separate the issues into two groups. Uh, one is financially related, the other part is administrative. So OPS agreed that uh, it's going to take on the administrative side. So and then we move on with the, the financial part. And the primary objective of this audit or this special review is to look into the financial uh, program uh, for the aftercare program. What we found out was that um, there were some students uh, who had not signed up for a program, and but that they participate in, in the aftercare. And then um, also um, two of the long sign up uh, students came from a nearby uh, our middle school. So that account for about $38,000. So there, there were, uh, we have other major issue with it. Uh, if they were not sign up, if something happened to the student, uh, we, we would get into the, the welfare and health issue, security issue of the student. So we, we, we took the project very seriously. Um, the project has been going on for, for some time because number one, uh, OPS uh, was trying to handle the administrative part. And then when we refer our draft report um, to the to the staff who, who who was the in charge of the program, um, the response also implicate the current and the former principals, and then we have to get them involved, and we eventually eventually uh, <coughs> receive the responses from both principals, and OBS was able to to take uh, the appropriate action to to close the case, so so we have done collective fees. We have money, some money missing, and also we have um, some uh, missing records f for a, a short period from August through October 2016. Mm -hmm. So that period, then we were not able to to uh, ascertain the revenues that should have been collected. Mr. Chu, um, <coughs> I just have a question on the calculation. I don't know if the auditors here did it. I, I can't back into $38,000. I'm missing something here. Okay. It's detailed later in the report. What's that? I did see it detailed later. In I the saw a detail, but I didn't see anything like that. I saw the fact that it's, um, it's significantly less money. I'm At missing something. At the bottom something. of page three is the, is the accounting of it. I had a question about that tuition. Go right ahead then. You, right, am I on page three? Page three. Keep going. going. Yeah. Page three. Oh, page three. Okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. Sorry, Grand Day, maybe. Go ahead, please. So, Mr. Chu, thank you for the in-depth um, review and, and audit you did of this. It was very well done. Um, I have a concern, though. You said that this came about because of a request from the principal, correct? Correct. So I remember when my children were in school and they were in the after-school program at their elementary school, and I remember children coming from the middle school and that were there. 
My concern is that this may be more of a, a widespread problem than, than we think, and we're not getting requests from principals either because they don't know or don't deem it to be important or whatever reason. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate to, or what the protocol would be to um, make a recommendation to the school district or that they, yeah, that they send a notification or some kind of communication to the schools, um, kind of reinforcing what the policy is and asking that the principals ensure adherence. Um, so that you don't have this happening in other places where we might not catch it because of not having a request by a uh, principal yeah. or other official. A positive affirmation that they understand the rules. Exactly. Thank you for the question. Um, historically, after care program was one of our focus in our past audits that um, we actually look into the program for a very extensive uh, sampling um, like 10 years ago up until the last two, three years, we kind of um, let it slow down a little bit. We focus on other, other side like disbursement because we had spent a lot of time for the program that the finding has gone down. So uh, staff throughout the districts uh, were very careful. So after a few years, we, we realized that we need to focus on it, it, it again in fact, we have opened up a, a special audit just for aftercare, and this is one of the reason. This is one of the reason that we we open up the, the special audit of the aftercare program. That we were afraid that uh, since we haven't been there for some time, so uh, we have some turnover in staff. There could be something that we have to pay attention. So, in fact, we have done it, and then the policy in the procedures, I say procedures in the aftercare program, is pretty detailed. Uh, all the controls are there. It's a matter of compliance. So I think we, we feel pretty comfortable uh, with the current system. Now, it's just this is like an isolated instance. Yeah? We don't usually see uh, the aftercare program accepted long registered uh -huh. students from other schools. Good that is our schools, not from the other, other uh, uh, long district schools. So that at least we, we, we are providing service to our own kids. However, because they are not registered, so we worry about other liabilities that we may be facing. Thank you. I'm glad to see the improvement in that area. It's been a while since my kids were in after-school programs. <laughs> Mr. Barbieri. Yeah, um, maybe Mr. Campbell can answer this since he looks like the highest-ranking administrator here today. Um, I, obviously, I'm concerned about the money, but I'm more concerned the children in this area of the district are, are the, some of the most impoverished children. So. I would hate to see us force these kids out of enrichment programs because they can't afford to pay. So what kind of programs do we have to make sure that kids who can't afford to pay can be in these enrichment programs? You know, Mr. Campbell? It's been about 10 years since I've been in elementary. So, uh, but as far as I can recall, we, we tried to make sure we worked with families who did not have the, uh, the means to, to pay for the aftercare programs. Um, and just each aftercare director tried to work it around whatever their particular budget was. All right, so Mr. Chu, I won't be at the school board meeting that's coming up when this is going to be discussed, but I would like, uh, I'll let the board office know. I want an answer on how, and whether these children that didn't pay, didn't pay because their parents couldn't afford to pay or they just didn't pay because nobody asked them to pay or somehow they got in the program. But I just want to make sure we're not excluding children um, that can't afford to pay from programs like this after school. So if we can right. get an answer on that. Uh, we understand that um, the school principal does have the authority to waive some of the fees okay. uh, uh, due to financial difficulty. All right. I'll follow up with the board office. Thank you. Okay. I'll make sure I present that too. That's why I was getting to the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. I know that there's several students that don't have to pay full full amount and it's even waived. So I didn't know the detail of that 114, how many of those would have been. I mean, we've had issues before, and listen, I'm not criticizing the orders. You guys are doing a good job. You need to present the information to us, but we need to put the humanity on it. So maybe that 37655 was never going to be received anyway. I don't want people to think that the district lost that money versus the fact that those students were there and they might have had it. So I understand what you're saying. And then I don't know what the policy is when you say our students, their students. I'm not sure what the policy is when one student can go to another school. In my mind, objectively, doesn't seem 
so bad to me. Maybe that's closer to home, maybe they have a sibling there. Maybe it's fine for a student to be at another school as long as it's documented and there's appropriate authorization for it. I'm not sure what the district policy is on it, but I have no problem one student from our school district going to a different school after care. I mean, there could be a lot of logistic reasons and humanitarian reasons why that's a good thing to do. And it, to me, the older students, in my mind, sometimes they might not like it. I think it's good because they could help the younger ones with their homework or something like that. Mm -hmm. So as long as people know that it's being done, and it's documented. That's what we need. To, that's what we need to have. So the, this report can go back to the area supervisor, and maybe I mean I saw the answers here. I think it's down up above from the area supervisor. So maybe they can get back to us mm -hmm. and let us understand exactly, you know, how much of that 114, you know, could have been waived and why it wasn't, and it, also documenting other students. Yeah, I, I understand that our schools uh, would accept our own kids from from other one. However, we just want to make sure they are registered properly. Right. Um, and, and the other major part is that um, uh, this aftercare program has developed into like enrichment program. We know that there are educational hours that could provide it during uh, uh, this time. So I, I think the school district is working very hard to, to make that like a, uh, a continual part of the education instructional rather than just a daycare uh, services. Correct. That, that part had, had helped a lot of kids. So very good. Any other questions on the report? Yeah, I have a question, Mr. Oh. Chu. Do you uh, automatically audit the after-school programs in each of the applicable schools? We do. Is we, that we, part we, of your audit? Okay. We sample them uh, because they have improved substantially uh, for the last, like, over 10 years. We kind of uh, <coughs> uh, cut down the sampling size so that we could move our resources to do other more Great. critical issues. So it's kind of, we, we rotate uh, our approach. And focus. Any other questions? Motion to move the report? So moved. Sir Roberts, thank you. Second? Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Me, all Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, it, uh, it passes unanimously, Mr. Blair. Okay, we now go on to special review of Palm Beach Gardens Community School fee collections. <laughs> Let me guess, Mr. Chu, who's going to present this? You are? You have someone who else? Yeah, come on up. Did it. Yeah, that's Susie come up. You don't need to hear from Mr. Chu all morning. <laughs> morning, Susie. Morning, Marcus. Thank you, Susie. Yeah. Um, Good morning. Susie morning. Kay is one of our audit supervisors, and she handles all the potential irregularities uh, uh, from the schools. Really? <laughs> Just from <laughs> too much long being here, right? Exactly. So what happened at this school is it was kind of a twofold thing. Uh, the community school secretary is responsible for collecting fees for the night program and what we discovered during the school audit was that there was a shortage in the community education portion that's not the adult ed where it's the adult basic program it's not the leasing fees because she was responsible for all three it was just in the uh, the night school part where like the leisure classes so those courses are registered in two ways. There's the ActiveNet online system where they can go online, register, and pay with a credit card. Or they can come to the school and they can still pay cash or write a check. The, this report is related strictly to the at-the-school payments. And for the fall semester, there was no deposits of any payments for those community school programs for that entire semester. And then in the January, it started again. So what was missing was strictly from that fall semester. Um, the in individual involved is no longer with the district. She's outside of the district completely, outside of the county. Uh, it was not prosecuted because in the end, all of the checks that were missing, none of them cleared their banks. We checked with different individuals. Um, about a year later, the current secretary started finding checks, talked here, talked there. Hmm. So the state attorney chose not to prosecute this case. It was negligence and incompetence, not theft. <laughs> I won't say that. <coughs> I know, I can't. So this, let me ask a question, because we've been doing this for a long time, and I think this, less and less cash. This seems like a good opportunity, maybe for this segment, Ms. Samuels, that we just say you have to do it online. 
I mean, I, I wonder if we're at that point now. Well, I think that principle, I think that was what his response ended up Well, I know he wants to do it, but I'm wondering if we could do it district-wide. See, I don't think you can, but that's personal. I wonder, I know, I don't know. People don't have a credit card. A lot of people don't have the ability uh, to. Yeah, unfortunately, there are, you know, members of society that do not have credit cards to pay online. No, I know, but that's the exception. I know that, I don't. No, I know, we, we like to encourage as much online um, transactions as possible but we can't, force, we can't force the schools to do online. And, in the, you know, and, it, and it comes down to the situation of it's still compliance. The individuals that we have in our right, schools. Right, I understand that. No, I know it's still compliance. I mean, this wasn't theft, but it very well could have been. None of the cash that disappeared has been found, so yes, it could have been. Because there was both cash and check payments. Yeah, I'm still thinking we need to go to one of our banks. I mean. I don't know the percentages, I can only guess, but I think it's a low percentage. I understand some people don't have their credit cards, but I don't know if it's, I don't know how many checks were made up for the 3,000 and how many of those subset of people had a credit card, they just didn't use it. I'm just thinking, was, you know, I think on an exception basis, we should accept checks instead of just as a policy. The problem with the night school is a lot of the leisure classes are taken by our seniors. Right. And that's just not going to be their nature to pay online. Right. Yeah, but this, every, a senior today wasn't a senior a couple days ago, and then they had, I understand what you're saying, but sooner or later we need to get to the point where this doesn't happen, and the way is cash out of the schools. I mean, this school also, this, like I said, this was, a, this was a situation with this individual because this was, a, if you remember the ActiveNet uh, right. case we presented, mm -hmm. this school had 42,000 in ActiveNet checks yeah. that never got deposited. We recovered that money. Right. I remember. Yeah, same, so. same situation. So I'm going to keep looking at it. I'm going to, I'll meet with the banks. I mean, I, I want to make it an exception instead of just a, a policy. I understand. All right. Well, so the district is, is not able to recover the $3,000? No. Sure. Even though we know who the people are? The, in, I don't know. At, at this point of yeah. the game, I Yeah, I understand. Don't. Yeah, I understand. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. Any questions besides that? I'll, I'll, meet, I'll work with Ms. Samuels on it in the banks. We'll come up with something. Any questions? Or? I do. Yes. Because we've had a problem with this school before, is the problem indicative of this school? Uh, I, that's a hard thing to say because you have staff turnover, you have administrative turnovers. You're never going to be able to pin that down to a pattern in one area. I mean, sometimes you can, but. Well, how often do we have schools where money's missing and we go back and we find checks in drawers or other, I mean, that's, so I think it is indicative of this. I mean, that's not, that's. Well, I think it might've been indicative of this individual. Right, this individual. But she's gone. Person. Right, and then that person's the gone. Right. So when you say the school, it was the bookkeeper. Okay. Right. Well, no, it was not the bookkeeper. Oh, I'm sorry, what was, the, what was that role? It was the community school secretary. Community, community school secretary. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disparage the okay. bookkeeper. Okay. Community school secretary. But no, I understand your question, but I don't think it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, motion to accept the report. Thanks, Susie. You're welcome. Mr. Second. 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 So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, competitive solicitation process, Mr. Chu. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this report is one of the um, very first one that we take on um, to focus on the projects funded by we have sent sales tax, mm -hmm. and then we, we put this program in our work plan. And uh, um, we did some testing for, we select some samples. Um, actually, we're looking into something very general um, to see whether or not the, the practice that we award the contract, select the contractor, and also the discussion, uh, were they complying with our existing guidelines, state statutes, and also the menu. Um, we, we select um, 12 key um, attributes that we determine the compliance, including, you see all those, um, we paid this on page one, that um, see if the public notice or advertisement of solicitation been uh, conducted, we see if the proposal came from three or more sources, bid tabulation, supported by the contract award and the NWBE participation. 
So we, we did the testing, we reviewed them, and then um, the, result, um, the results were positive that, that um, all these contract awards were substantially complying with these 12 key attributes. That's a, a kind of good sign. So, and then we move on to review some, um, some imitation to bid and also project awards in more detail. And the one we mentioned here under number two is kind of uh, unusual. Hmm. We find out this particular vendor submit the bids for some items which were significantly uh, lower than the reasonable price, like a dollar per unit, either per square foot or, or, or something. So we find out um, this substantially under underpriced code accounts for 43 items or 28 percent of the item 152 items that they submit the bid. But just on this one bid. Just for this one. Right, just one bid. Or just, just this one. Did bid. we determine if it was an aberration <coughs> they did it on purpose to lower their average price to win? Or do we, we don't know that. We, we don't know. I lost this of speculation. Yeah. Wait till we And then we reply to them. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. If you see that the further detail, we cannot discuss it in the Excel summary. That mm -hmm. we did talk to a few um, potential bidder in the area. They all expressed their comment that they did not want to submit a bid because they will be they will lose the bid because of this vendor. Mm -hmm. So, and I think this what we call it unbalanced bid that uh, uh, purchasing need to address. They need to review. Um, so, so that the com competition can be, can stay in the program with appropriate integrity. So, and then, um, so in the response you see that, you know, they, they are being reminded to look in the procedures and to, to make sure that something similar happen again that will not just award it to a vendor with this kind of unavailable bid. So, Mr. Chu, I'm particularly concerned about this area. So much work has been done to make sure that there's fairness and there's equity in the letting of contracts that even though this is just one, this is the first audit and this is the first review, and already we're finding a vendor who, I'm going to make the assumption, intentionally um, presented this, this bid. Now, having come from uh, the construction industry, when bids or when requests for bids for projects were let out, sometimes contractors would come in, do things like this and come in lower intentionally, and then later on down the road, come back wanting change orders. And I hope that the, um, the folks that are reviewing this and that are overseeing this are very well aware and understand, and that we, that a, a, I think an example needs to be set with someone doing this, that they get their bid thrown out and a message will be sent that it won't be tolerated and that you've got to come in with fair bids equally, um, with an equal representation or proper representation. Uh, and then the comment in the audit report that um, other prospective bidders might not bid because of, of this kind of shenanigans going on, someone pro, uh, providing an unbalanced lower bid, I think is, is very real, and you'll find that that will be the case, particularly with minorities and women who we're supposed to be trying to ensure are protected. So um, a, a recommendation to the school board needs to be very strong about this because the public's watching this also, and this is very, very important um, as it relates to the fact that we're getting that half a penny sales tax. It in this particular case, I'm, I'm understanding from the report that there was only the one bidder. Is that true? I mean, because that seemed like something that would be a a lot of people in the fence business um, that you would have had. They would have had more. Is there any indication that you, you know why only one bidder proposed on this? Would I have uh, Darcy from the right. Right. director of purchasing to respond? Be happy to. Um, I think on this particular bid, yes, there was um, one bidder. If you look back at the Exhibit B, there were several bidders that participated on the last bid, and Gomez and Sons Fencing um, obviously came in with the low bid. I think what you're looking at is a vendor who um, 
when we establish bidding criteria and we've awarded a bid and we're getting ready to go into the next new bid period, uh, we, we see many public records requests for folks to come in and take a look at our bids to see what the pricing looks like. And we honor all those requests. So whether or not a, a participant decides whether or not they're going to bid or not, we never know that. So with Gomez and Sons fencing, they've been on our bid for many, many years. They're a very large firm. They're a um, fabricator all the way through installation. And I don't know if, if that presented itself to the competition as something they couldn't compete against. Um, we don't know that. We had one company after we uh, reviewed the bid that said they, um, they knew that they couldn't compete with the pricing. They had another vendor that said they couldn't submit their bid timely for whatever reason. Um, I think when you look at the layout of this bid, it was a weighted bid so that every item in the particular category that we may have a need for had to be identified because you couldn't award the bid unless everyone participated in all the categories. S with that said, and I only suggest, and I, in my opinion, uh, having this vendor has been awarded on many bids, they had a pretty good idea of what our purchasing, you know. Where the, where the dollars were. Where the dollars lie. I think we probably can do a better job with this bid going forward, and it's our intent to do that. Um, but keep in mind, there can't be any change orders. So if we decide to change from a six-foot fence to a 10-foot fence, and you priced it at a dollar, well, that's what we're buying it for. Okay. So there isn't a possibility to do any change orders. They have to honor that price. All right, so let me, let me understand. It's two, it's two pieces of the puzzle, which I thought it would be. So they game, they know our matrix. They know what we're well, most likely would be buying. And everything they assumed we wouldn't buy, they put it to dollar, so their weighted average cost would be lower and they'd win the bid. So it's a very, what they did was very smart. Yes. It's within the rules, mm -hmm. but it's probably not what we're looking for. I would agree with that. Okay, so we need to, so we need to, we need a suggestion of how to adjust the rules. Well, listen, we do want to pay the lowest price, but we want everybody to compete, compete fairly. They know the system well enough, and they're smart enough to game our system and win it. So there's nothing wrong with what they did. I say it's our fault. Now that we know about it, we need to adjust the matrix. So we have to weigh it either on our own. I'm going to use. Uh, uh, it's like Monte Carlo theory. I think Mr. McGinley knows about that. We need to know what we're most likely purchasing or going to be buying. So we have to weigh it ourselves. So we have a real. We need to do something so we could stop them from doing it. Yeah, something different. Yeah. So we it's our. We need now that we know about it to do that, so it doesn't happen. Yeah. It would have been. It would have been awkward if there had been another bidder that didn't know how to. Well, obviously, they right. game the system and you know, they, they put the real pricing prices on everything, right? And uh, you know, didn't realize how how they could work it so that they could get the bid. Right, exactly. Right. So we need now to go back and we need to fix it. Because because what's happened is that right. these people, this contractor, like you said, knows the system, knows how to how to bid. Others may not, but they see continually that they get all the work. So it takes a lot of time and effort to put a bid together. So their attitude is, why should I even bother when I know I'm not going to get it? I know they're going to the you know the the award is the contract's going to be awarded to these folks. Also, I noticed that not even there was a, re a requirement for a. Second and third uh, vendor. Secondary. A secondary vendor that wasn't selected because no one bid against them, so they got the full, right. um, the full contract and and shut everybody else out. So I, th I think that was because we had worked with Gomez and Son for many years. We knew they performed. We've had no issues, and at the time, um, we probably chose to make a decision not to pursue a secondary. I'm not saying that was right, but you That's know we're going to put out a bid and no one's going to participate. So at that point, I think we have to just look overall going forward at how we how we revise the bid. Maybe we throw in a hypothetical that we typically use. Maybe we invite a pool of contractors. There's lots of ways we as a district can can look at this bid and, and actually come up with something a little better. Okay. Good. Um, my concern is that there's lots of money to be spent and on a go forward basis we don't want to have this occur over and over and over again. That's, that's it. Well, neither does purchasing. Purchasing wants competition, but I can't force people to participate. If they come in and, 
you know, we can encourage them. We reach out to vendors. We have outreach programs. Um, not everybody's interested in doing business with us, but we will encourage them. Please come back in, you know. Well, we want you know. them to know that it's a, it's a reasonably fair system. So That's right. Right. I agree. Are, are we maintaining statistical data um, with regards to uh, who actually applies for? Oh, absolutely. And, then, and, and how they fit into the various categories and so forth? We absolutely have that data. In fact, before we put a bid out, we go back and look at what our last um, mailing list was. We reach back to those folks. We reach back to the Office of Diversity. We determine if there's any new people that we're not aware of. So we go through that process before we put that bid out. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Per perhaps um, at a later meeting down the road somewhere, we could get a report and see how we're, do how we're doing as compared to what we thought we were going to do. Sure. Thank Sounds you. good. Mr. Barbieri, do you have something? Yeah, uh, as, you, as you know from prior discussions I've had, I, I serve as the board's representative also on the Construction Oversight mm -hmm. Review Committee. And something that was brought to my attention, and I wanted to bring the Audit Committee's attention while we're looking at the bidding process, is when, when, the, when, the, uh, when we prove the, when the bidding, when the, when the bidders are, are weighted and given number one choice or number two, um, there's a representative from the Construction Oversight Review Committee that has the ability that serves on that, uh, what is that called, Darcy, that committee, the... Uh, well, that's an evaluation committee evaluation that takes committee. place with yeah. RFPs. Yeah, so the evaluation committee on an RFP includes one of the Construction Oversight Review Committee volunteer members who gets to vote. And uh, since the district has absolutely no authority over those people, um, I brought it to the attention of the Chief Operating Officer who's looking into it, but I'll give you an example of what happens based on what I understand from from a report back from one of them, there was a two architects bid on Verde Elementary School to rebuild the school. One of the Construction Oversight Review Committee members that serves on the Evaluation Committee <coughs> didn't like the fact that the one bidder proposed a two-story building, and so he shifted all of his votes to the other to the other architect and was able to move number one to number two and number two to number one. And in fact, the one that won the bid actually has now designed a school that's a two-story building, which everybody knew was going to be a two-story building anyway because of the land size over there. So my concern is that we have um, audit committee or construction oversight review, review committee volunteers who, who get to actually vote twice. They're voting once on the evaluation committee and then at the court met, met meeting they get to vote again whether they support the, the uh, recommendation to the school board. So I, I think there's definitely a, a potential problem there. I'm not suggesting this board, this, this Cork member had any financial motive to do it, but you could get a financial motive to do that if you're the, able to conflict. shift, a, actually shift a contractor from one position to the to another. There's nothing to keep that from happening. So I'm concerned about um, us not having our own district employees serve on the evaluation committee rather than. I agree, um, and there could be also conflicts. I don't know, and there's, I don't know whether well, our if home I purchasing is having every participant on the evaluation committee. If I may. Complete conflict forms, but people in that industry do work together from my past experience <coughs> oh, yes. working with developers. If, if I may, this is an invitation to bid. This is not an RFP. Okay. So, well, it is because I, this is an invitation to bid, so it's weighted on the overall low cost. There's no committee member. It's the lowest price that meets the required specifications and terms and conditions that come in that was weighted for this particular solicitation. It's an objective, it's an objective I, formula. I agree. It's, I, I, but I'm I understand. Not, I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking no, about that. In, in general, you're absolutely correct with the RFP and the evaluation right. committee. Right. Yes. Right. I just wanted to make the distinction right. between sure. this right. type of solicitation. Right. That's why we need to adjust the algorithm so, mm -hmm. it's, so the algorithm's fair. You were talking about the issue on the table, the one related to I just wanted to make sure we right. were clear, so that's the, all. The one related to the fencing was an invitation. That is correct. What Mr. Bobby invitation to up bid. Is clearly an RFP. Right. Okay. I understand Where that. The people do get the right to evaluate. Yeah. Okay. That is correct. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions? It's an area of concern that needs Definitely. to be reviewed Absolutely. and addressed. Yeah. Well, we're going to I would be. agree. I agree. Okay. Should we accept the report as it yeah, is? Mr. Chairman, we yes, one sir. Well, number sure. three, uh, yeah. fund number three, that um, because of that, we make a commitment to uh, uh, to review, right. to audit uh, the projects funded by 
the, uh, the healthy and sales tax, yes, sir. which accounts for $140 million a year. Mm -hmm. uh, over 10 years, almost $1.4 billion is a lot of money. Uh, in fact, Liz and I and the staff, we are talking about uh, we need to refocus our resources to make sure that we have a function to, uh, to monitor, to oversee contract and construction award. Mm. So we go, uh, we're going to bring it back uh, in our next meeting about our proposed uh, restructuring uh, of our office so that we have put in enough adequate resources to monitor. Because th this is something, I mean, I'm not saying this is, is disturbing. We do have some hiccups in here. If you look at finding number three, uh, that we are giving out the contracts uh, that somehow in potential violation of the Sunshine Law so, mm -hmm. and, and the public record law. So we, uh, we, we feel very strongly that uh, we are going to come back with a, a suggestion <coughs> to beef up the contract monitoring and, and, and uh, construction oversight because of there's yeah, a lot of money uh, coming Agreed. in. So we will bring it back in our next meeting. Agreed. I don't know what the proper protocol is for my request, but I do have a request. And I note that there were six contracts that were let for a total value of, of over $37 million. Um, you only found that had a finding with one of the, the six categories. Um, my request is I'd like to, to know um, for each of the six contracts, um, what were the numbers of, of uh, bids that were that were um, received, what was the makeup uh, in terms of, of um, the criteria um, of those, of those uh, bids, and then um, obviously I see here what the contract amount was, but I'd like to know who's bidding, how many bids are we getting, and who's doing the bidding um, as compared to who we, were, who we are awarding the contracts to. Uh, uh, Darcy, to can you, you think you could compile the information for us? Be happy to. Okay. She'll, send it, she'll send it through uh, yeah. Claudia. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Darcy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Very good. So we have file number three I just mentioned. So that's our conclusion for this, um, for this audit. How far off was the notice? Um, it, just like it, we, we need to, uh, I think, uh, this, how, 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 how much in advance we need to noti notify for public for the hearing? Like, is it three days? What are we hearing? We hearing like, the, for this finding here, we talk about, well, we did not have enough uh, public notice to invite the uh, right. public participation. This was like one day or like half a day. Uh, is it three days? I, yeah. know, I half can't a day. remember. Yeah. The half a day is a little too tight. Yeah. Half a day is not <laughs> re realistic. Oh, right. Just generally. Yeah, advance of November 2nd. Okay. I see it now. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. that's a good finding. Good. Okay. All right, motion to accept. I make Sir? a motion that we accept the report. Okay. And with the follow up that you requested. Second. Yes. Mr. Ro Robert, just all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, we move on now to order FYI. <laughs> FYI, I understand that. Mr. Chu, it looks like your department has a lot of work to do if we bring the update of the internal funds audit. Um, yeah, we, we started the internal funds audit again. Yes, sir. Uh, again, we are using the approach that we have used for the last several years, we focus on the vulnerable areas. We, we did a lot of uh, trend analysis. Uh, uh, this year, we even provide a more complete uh, historical background of the findings at the schools. Hmm. Uh, when staff uh, go out before doing the field work, so that staff will provide the, to the principal uh, the findings area how they were doing for the last five years, six years, so that uh, the principal, if it being a new, new appointment, that the principal would know what's happening with the schools and the area that need to, need to focus on. So we are giving similar information to all the schools. And, they had that before. Uh, not as completed. I want it in more detail okay. so that, that uh, they are aware. And, and the principals are, are eventually responsible for, for the repeated findings. Correct. Information's good. You're not against that, Mr. McGinley, are you? <laughs> Information. I'm not All right, so we have the FYIs. Yeah. Those are, for, those are everybody's packages there. You guys Your succession is going to be brought to the board first, and then it may yes. or may not yeah. come back to the committee. Yeah, I think it will. Uh, Claudia, September 21st. I'm not in town. 
Neither well, I am know. I. Not, so we have two members that aren't going to be here. We'll reschedule it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll. And, and you also, the, you, you weren't here now. <laughs> and it's on September 5th, uh, yes. we're going to have a workshop with the school board about our work plan. Yes. I hope that um, some of you can come. Can any of the members make it? I'm gonna, I'll be there. September 5th. I have it on my it's calendar. It's enough to move. Just pending the time. Yeah, it's most likely in the afternoon, right, Claudia? Yeah. Yeah. Like somewhere between three and four, <coughs> okay. five, something like that. If you can make I'll it, that'd be great. Put a placeholder. Yes. Yeah, it's good to, I can it's make good that. Good to work with them. Thank you okay. for, for coming. You guys can make it. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Chu? Let me see. I'll go. Mr. Roberts? If you're, if you're through, I just, um, now seems like as good a time as any. Yes, sir. I'm going to have to uh, resign from the, from the committee. I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity over the years to, to be on this committee and uh, congratulate you, Mr. Chairman. And, and this committee, I was glad to be a part of it. Um, enjoyed working with Mr. Chu and his staff. Um, I've got some issues with family members that some health problems and it's just, it takes more time than I'm, I'm going to be able to give to it. So with that, I'd like to wish all of you well and, and uh, hope to see you again in the future. So, Thank you, Mr. Roberts. You're going to let you, your sir. board member know, yes? Huh? You're going to let your board member know. I'm a board you, member. So you're going to let your board member know. So yes, I will. I will make it, if, if it suits the committee, uh, there's a, an IROC, uh, the, the uh, meeting on Friday. I'll attend that, so I'll make my resignation effective after, after that meeting. Thanks. Thanks so much. How many years have you been on the committee? I don't know. I, at, least ten, <laughs> at least 10 or 12. I, I'm not sure how, you know, I was a really young guy back then. <laughs> sure, yeah, I know. I know. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Oh. All these years you've been helping us. Thank David. you. I was just going to say, weren't we all young at one point? <laughs> yeah. I still am. Uh, that's right. Okay. So, Thank you. Since we're making announcements, yes, I just want to announce that I've legally changed my name to Tammy McDonald. Oh, you have? Yes. Why oh, we got to change your card? Oh, all right, Ms. Too. McDonald. Thank Claudia you for letting us know. I have a marker here if you want. <laughs> we'll just... Very good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other business? Okay. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts.